Hi and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. These adorable cow images inside the Over the Moon stamp set calls for color, but today I'm going to be teaching you a really neat masking technique. I've included lots of tips to make it easier for you to achieve the same results. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the small bell icon that's next to the subscribe button and you'll get notifications when I'm live here on YouTube as well as when I upload a new video. Here's a quick look at the card we're gonna be creating together today. So let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a close up of the card we're gonna be creating together. Isn't this adorable? Such a fun stamp set. You're gonna find the Over the Moon stamp set in the current annual Stampin' Up! catalog. In addition to the amazing products that are inside of here, there's also a brand new holiday catalog. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you would like complimentary copies, head over to lisastampstudio.com and click on Contact Me. Just before you joined me, I die cut a rectangle stitched piece of cardstock using thick Whisper White. I absolutely love this collection of dies. There are graduated sizes and every single one is a stitched frame. Now I did do a little stamping and a little coloring right before you joined me because the focus on today's video is the masking technique. So what I've done is I've used my Memento Black ink pad and I stamped that adorable cow image from that stamp set. Also included in that stamp set is the small image of grass. I just stamped that along the bottom of the feet. I chose to use the Memento Black ink pad because it's a water-based ink and I chose to use alcohol-based markers. I did leave a small area here open so that I can show you how to use the Stampin' Blends very quickly, but I also have an entire series here on YouTube teaching you how to use them in various ways. The Stampin' Blends markers come light and dark, and you can purchase them individually or as a combination. The line below the caps indicate the size of the tip on the marker. I prefer to use the lightest color first. It really doesn't matter. It's just a matter of preference. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off the cap to the thin side and I'm gonna lay color where I want it around the snout of my cow. You're gonna use these very much like you would any other marker. The one reason I favor the alcohol-based Stampin' Blends is that the coverage is flawless. Unlike a dye-based marker, when you repeat an area, you actually get what I call those like hard lines where the color actually is darker. That doesn't happen on an alcohol-based marker because of the evaporation. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of shading, and I often hear that you don't know where to lay the color and you're not good at shading. My tip for you is number one, if there are detailed lines inside the stamped image, use those as your cheat marks. If there isn't, then graduate all the darker shades on one side. I'm no artist by any means, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of dark shade over on this side of the snout, and I'm gonna concentrate a little bit underneath those nostrils and underneath the mouth. The magic comes with going back to the lighter shade and blending those two shades together, because what you don't want, especially with a darker color, is those harsh lines where one color ends and another begins. Of course, you could use the alcohol-based markers here for the grass, but I decided I wanted to teach you that as part of the masking technique. The very first thing you're gonna to need to do is grab a post-it note, and I've got one here. My sticky edge is right up here near the top, and you definitely wanna make sure that when you stamp the image on here to create the mask, that you're including as much of the image along that sticky edge as possible, because that's what's gonna help hold it to your cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the cow here, and I'm gonna turn this to make it a little bit easier for my hand and I'm gonna stamp that image here along that post-it note edge. Now I have one that's already cut out for you, but I'm gonna talk you through the cutting process because it's rather important. You're gonna to want to cut right on the stamped outline. The reason being is because this is a mask, it's gonna be laid over the original stamped image and you don't want a separation between the original stamped image and the mask itself. So what you'll do is you'll come right on top of that line and you're gonna cut as precisely as you can right on that stamped line. As I mentioned, I made one before you joined me. It's actually the one I used for my original card and I keep it inside the stamp case. That makes it really convenient when I come back to use it again. We're gonna add a little bit of color to the sky and to the grass. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna add that post-it note where it's sticky right over my original stamped image. You want to align it as carefully as possible. Once it's been covered, it is now protected, which means that the ink you're going to lay down will not actually fall on the image underneath. Let's start with the sky. I chose balmy blue ink. I'm gonna bring in a piece of scrap cardstock here. These are the small grid sheets. 
And I'm going to be using a sponge dauber. And I love these because your fingers go up inside, makes it really easy to use. But my best tip for you about these is when you ink it up inside your ink pad, you're going to want to dab off some of that ink. You want to make it light enough that you can control the coverage without making the area too dark. And because we don't want to risk lifting the mask, we're going to be very careful in how we rub the coverage. So I'm going to just go very lightly and I'm going to pull away from the post-it note, adding some colors in the area that the sky would be prominent. I'm going to go ahead and re-ink my sponge dauber. I'm going to tap it off again to make sure it's not too dark. I'm going to turn my cardstock this time to make it easier for my hand and I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process now. I'm going to fill in a little bit more of the paper. Since I'm not working over the post-it note, I can be a little bit more vigorous in applying the coverage near the top of my card. Remember, you can always go back and add more color, but you can't take it away, so start lightly. I often find, too, that when you move the mask, it's going to look a lot darker than it looks with the mask on top. I'm going to switch colors now to do the grass. I'm using Pear Pizzazz ink for the grassy area, and I have a separate sponge dauber for that one. I'll go ahead and ink that up as well. And to make sure I don't transfer that blue onto this dauber, I'm just gonna reposition my scratch paper here. I'm gonna ink that up again, dabbing off some of the color. And we're gonna do the exact same thing here. And this time we're gonna concentrate on the areas where I have actually stamped the grassy image. Again, you want to pull away from the post-it note because you don't wanna lift it. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and carefully lift off the mask. And as I indicated, go ahead and save that in your stamp case. The result is a perfectly sponged background without any color on your actual image. Let's go ahead and finish the card now. I chose to use Petal Pink cardstock for my balloons and I'm using the Balloon Builder Punch. You're gonna see there's a larger balloon and a smaller balloon. I'm gonna do the smaller balloons because I think they work more proportionate to my image. So I'm gonna slide my cardstock in and I'm just gonna use this one and then I'll slide that over and I'll punch out another. I wanted to add a little bit of texture to these so I grabbed my subtle embossing folder. I'm gonna add the paper inside so you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. I wasn't particular on what direction this went in here. So you can see that once it's embossed, we're gonna have very faint textured lines on here. I've just embossed those, and let me show you how I edit those to my card. I've got the silicone craft sheet here. I love to work with this in the studio because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it. I'm choosing to turn these upside down on my work surface. I've cut two pieces of white baker's twine. They're about three inches in length. I'm going to anchor the baker's twine down using dimensionals. So I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to place it back here on the back of the balloon and then I'll tack that in place. And I'll do the same thing now with this one. Once those are in place, I'm going to use my take your pick tool. I've got the paper piercing tool attachment here and I'll just lift off those paper backings. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to position them here on my card where I want them. And I'll start with my first one. I want to make sure that this is going to fall closely to the top of his tail. So I've got my first balloon here. And then I've got my second balloon here, and I can overlap these or I can place this one in front or in back. No two cards are the same, so this is going to be slightly different than my original one. Down here at the bottom, I made a very small bow using the baker's twine. I've got that here. And you can adhere that with some liquid glue, but I found a glue dot to be much easier for me. I've got my glue dots here. I'll use my piercing tool attachment and I'll just ball that up as small as I can. They're really sticky, so I'm not worried about it not staying sticky enough. I'm gonna place that here at the base of his tail and I'm gonna add the two baker twines right over the top. That's gonna hold those in place. And then what I can do now is I can come in and give these a small trim just to get them to the length that I want them. And then I'm gonna use one more now for the back of that bow. So I'm gonna make a small little circle again. Again, you're gonna to wanna to ball this up. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that this lines almost perfectly to the original glue dot. And then I'll take the center of my bow and I'll tack that in place as well. So now we've got those anchored down. Let's go ahead and let's add the greeting to our card next. Now on my original card, I had plenty of room here. This one, I'm actually gonna move my greeting down just a little bit. I have a base here of Whisper White cardstock. This measures four and a quarter by 11. I did score it right before you joined me. Remember, you're gonna be able to find all the cutting dimensions for this card down in the video description below if you're here visiting from YouTube. Let's flip this over and we're gonna add dimensionals to the back side. Did you notice how the alcohol markers bled through the paper a little bit? It's important that you cover your work surface to protect it. In addition to that, that's the sign of a really good paper. 
If you're using an alcohol-based marker, you need to be able to blend. So you want a nice, durable, thick, whisper white cardstock. And then this is going to get layered right here in the center of that card base. Super cute birthday card, isn't it? And quite easy. Here's the one we created together today, the one I created before you joined me. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It makes them and I both very happy. And I look forward to having you back with me next time. Have a great day.